Hello Booktube, this is Leo from A Little Book Life and this time with another novel by Daphne du Maurier. This time The Scapegoat. The Scapegoat was first published in 1957 and is a wonderful story about John, an Englishman in France, who one night meets Jean, a French aristocrat who looks exactly the same as him. So much so that Jean asks John, you're not a devil by any chance. John and Jean swap lives, although involuntary. John is forced to do so by Jean, the Frenchman. Suddenly, the Englishman John has a wife, a daughter, a mother, a sister and a brother who all live in a family castle. He even has a mistress. He has to deal with very strained family relations. Much to his own surprise, he gets attached to them in the course of a week and strives to solve their problems, which are caused by his counterpart Jean, who is his spitting image, but is opposite in character. It also deals with the emotional aftermath of World War II, of the resistance and the collaborators in France. It turns out that Jean's character and temperament is so different from John's that he has caused several family fights. So John is turned into the scapegoat by Jean. This is a highly character-driven and psychological novel written in the trademark Du Maurier style, which is always very atmospheric and full of suspense. Because the reader, like the main character John himself, knows nothing at first about the family, you feel his uncertainty yourself, and you as a reader are just as curious and excited as the main character to learn about the family. This is brilliantly done by Daphne de Maurier. In the Virago edition, Liza Apagnesi, who is the chairman of the Royal Society of Literature, and a former chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Freud Museum in London, speaks about how the main character of this novel is the male counterpart of Rebecca, the protagonist of Du Maurier's famous novel, and has many psychoanalytical references. So I hope that Juan from Just Juan Reader, who is also a fan of Du Maurier and a psychoanalyst, will read it someday and will talk about this on his channel. The Glassworks factory that is owned by the family and has made their fortune is a reference to Du Maurier's ancestors who were glassblowers in France. This craft is also represented in her novel The Glassblowers. There is also much of Daphne Du Maurier herself to be found in the person of the child, Marie Noël, the adoring devotion of the daughter for the father, the being of neither fully girl nor boy. The only flaw in this book is the complete resemblance of John the Englishman and Jean the Frenchman. They are not related, so not identical twins and resembling someone so closely that even relatives are fooled seems a bit implausible. And then there is the language too. Although John speaks French fluently, it cannot be that he speaks it the same as the native Jean. But then again, maybe the reader has to just accept this, like you would in a fantasy or science fiction story. Once you do this, all that's left is a truly magnificent story. And Daphne de Maurier tells also a beautiful thing. When no one sees through you, when you pretend the one, they have known their whole life, there is one act that cannot disguise who you truly are, and that is making love, which is the moment where you are fully exposed as a unique individual.